Having children was a dream of ours. Hashem had different plans. There's an expectation that you set the stopwatch, that nine months after you get married, we have a Shalom Zacher or a Kiddush. That's the expectation. A year passes, two year passes. Every bris, you get a call, do you want to be the kvata? Everyone who ever heard of a segula calls you up because they're doing you the favor because you, you really had never thought of any of this beforehand. And you become a Rachmanis. It is a Rachmanis. All your friends, they've moved on. Everyone's talking about life, the kids, they're complaining about the gun, the kindergarten, and the this and the that. And you're just rinse and repeat. You're just going through this again and again. So nine years after we're married, Baruch Hashem, our son came along, and it was really uh, an unbelievable simcha. From that point forward, we felt that we had an opportunity then to go on Shlichus, and we came to Denver. And coming to Denver was also good for us because here in Colorado is the number two fertility clinic in the United States. So we became patients here in Colorado. And there came a time that the doctor sat us down and said, um, based on your file, uh, we think you should make peace with the fact that you're going to have one child in your family and stop driving yourself crazy. Stop putting yourself in debt. There doesn't look good. So what do you do? You write to the Rebbe, you send it to the oil, you write that the doctors have said that there's nothing more to do. If you want something to happen, I'm okay. But our journey has ended. The events in Mumbai happened. We knew we had to do something. We weren't quite sure what to do. We made an event, about 300 people came, a real cross-section of the community. Had a few speakers, showed the video of uh, Gabi and Rifki, a very moving event to inspire people to take on mitzvahs, to do something proactive to bring more Kedusha, holiness to the world. The sermon, the, the conversations, the memorial was just so um, moving. Uh, and I, I just disappeared, I disappeared into the moment, I didn't feel like there was anyone else in the room. So Dr. Glasner, who has the fertility clinic, comes over to me and says, Shraga, they took five of ours, I'm gonna give five back. I just said I'll replace the ones that were lost. And I don't even think he heard me. The next day we're unpacking all the events that took place, follow up this one, follow up with that one, so I give Michael a call. I said, Michael, the comment you made to me about you know taking five, replacing five, did I hear you correctly? Did I understand what you meant? And he said, Shraga, you understood very well what I meant. I said, okay, I said, I'll roll it out. Shraga Sherman from Philadelphia is on the phone. Yasi, how are you? Remember we learned in Kailul together. Shraga, how can I help you? He says, Yasi, how can I help you? So I had no problem picking up the phone and saying, Yossi, I hear you have a situation. I have an opportunity. Does it interest you? I said, Shraga, do you know what it costs? Four days later, I get a phone call from a rabbi from Denver. It was very clear we needed Labavacher Rabbonim to be involved in this process as well. So Baruch Hashem, Rabbi Ullman, was able to get involved in this process. He took a tour of the clinic with Dr. Glass and his entire, entire staff, and we were able to implement the Rebbe's insights, the Rebbe's heiroz in these, in these matters. I sit my wife down, I say, listen, remember we wrote to the Rebbe and we said, we've done everything we can do. There's a doctor who wants to sponsor one. What's devastating is to see the, the light go out of people's eyes and to see their dream disappear. He looks through the file and he tells us, you have to promise me that when this doesn't work, you'll come back and try again. Somebody tells me that they are done, 
they're finished, they don't want to, they, they accept their fate, that's okay. But when they tell me, we still have that dream, and then it's a money issue, that shouldn't be there. And that's what I tried to do. We're scheduled to fly in to Philadelphia to be monitored. We were supposed to leave on a Tuesday, Shabbos. My mother-in-law passes away. Motsi Shabbos, after we hear the news, the first call my wife makes is to the doctor to say, we're canceling. I have a funeral to go to, I have to sit Shiva. The doctor says, where are you sitting Shiva? Why well, says, Boston. He says, if I find doctors to monitor you in Boston, and you can come at the end of the week, Friday, you'll come back here. So my wife asked her father, and her father said, this is what her mother would want. Friday, we come to Philadelphia, and after the doctor's appointments, we go to uh, Rabbi Sherman's house, and here's a couple walks into the house that I don't think his wife ever met us before. And we're sitting, my wife's sitting shiver in his house. It was one of those moments where obviously it's tragic. And it's not enough that we're sharing some most intimate aspects of a couple's life creating a child. That we have the opportunity to host her with the full cycle of life, the end to the beginning, everything in between. For, for my wife and I, it was an incredible opportunity to truly be there for a brother and for a sister in a time when they really needed it. All we had to provide was the space, but that was really that space was crucial to them at that moment. And it wasn't just a physical space. We tried really hard to create a, an emotional space where she could, on the one hand, grieve a loss, and the other time, at the self-same moment, focus on creating a future. The synergy of those two dimensions coming together, it's like Na'ila. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Nine months later, Ches Cheshvan, twins of them. Full term, healthy, ten fingers, ten toes, twins. That first few years when I was taking care of rabbis, there was medicine that was beyond medicine and there was some divine intervention. I'm sure Hashem was part of that because on paper they weren't going to get pregnant. Following up with the OBGYN, they tell us, you know, that uh, after twins, sometimes there can be spontaneous pregnancy. And maybe you would consider birth control. So I'm looking at this doctor and I said, one second, you're saying that after trying for 20 years, it could be that we may have a baby naturally. He said, yes. You understand? So we need to do something about it. I said, do something about it. Are you crazy? 20 years I'm paying, and now if Hashem wants to give us one for free, we're, we're going to say no? Out of this phone call from Shraga Sherman, what was us making peace with having a, a one child, we're now Baruch Hashem have a family of four, but we're a miracle family. I've never met a group of people like the Shluchim, and when I, I never felt anything for the religion, and then one day I went to the Chabad house and met with Rabbi Sherman, and uh, it had to probably have been one of the most uplifting decisions I made. My dream is to one day be financially secure enough that I can just do this for free. Because that, that's what breaks my heart, that people don't open the door, don't come in to try. Sometimes we think if another shleich gets involved with one of our balabatim, it will affect us. 
And what this proved to me is that it affected me very positively. My relationship with Michael is of a different nature than it would have been, than it was beforehand. Because after Yossi, there were a number of other shluchim, uh, quite a number of other shluchim, that came through uh, Dr. Glasner's clinic. So when the event in Mumbai happened, and we know the Rebbe's approach is you gotta do. Hemshech Abinyan, continue of the building, that's what's gonna bring the comfort and consolation. So we have to be in a Hemshech Abinyan. And uh, when you start something, you have no idea where it's gonna go. And we see here the impact that it had on not just for Yossi and his, and his, and his family, but for so many other shluchim and shluchas. And the, I really thank the Rebbe for the schus that my wife and I had and have in this, uh, in this endeavor. Nothing, uh, nothing tops it. Nothing tops it. When you sit and you think, there's so many problems in this world. And every one of us has a story. And when we meet each other, and when you ask somebody, Emma's, how are you? How can I help you? What could them could be something that's, it's the biggest thing in the world. They can't deal with it. And you happen to have the key to help them. It's amazing. Whose brachas are they? It's the Rebbe's brachas. My life changed because there was another shliach who picked up the phone and called me. I don't live in his community. And sometimes I forget we even talked. Think, is there some resource I have that's beneficial to somebody else? They're part of a big family. And if you have a resource, there's somebody in that family that you can help. And often, it doesn't even cost you anything. It just is a matter of being in the moment, being aware that you're not alone. It's a big family, and you're the solution to one person's problem. Solve it today.